It's a real pleasure to be able to talk with Dr. Kerry Crofton. May I call you Kerry? Yes, please. Lyle. Thank you. Dr. Crofton um, has, is spending most of her life right now trying to help people understand the problems that we have with electrical, electrical magnetic frequencies in all areas uh, of our universe, of our lives. She's written a wonderful book called Wireless Radiation Rescue. I wonder if you would be kind enough to explain to people what electromagnetic frequencies are, where they exist, and some of the just the basic things that they um, can do to the human system. And then we'll go into some detail. Okay. Well, I welcome this opportunity because as a, a parent um, and an electronics consumer, I had filled my house and office with all the conveniences. And as soon as they brought out a new, more powerful technology, I, of course, needed to have that. Um, I say that at the beginning because I don't want any um, consumers, parents, grandparents, uh, whoever, uh, to feel guilty that we have, in fact, filled our homes, our schools, our cities with these devices that emit this, particularly this wireless radiation. Um, we are, as you know, electrical beings ourselves. And we have a wonderful integrity and balance and harmony. And we have uh, existed in this uh, electromagnetic field of Earth and in this cosmos quite happily for uh, who knows how many years, but a long time. It's very different, however, with these new artificial frequencies from wireless radiation, radio frequency, microwave. These we have not adapted to, and there is significant health concern. And basically, that even comes down to the fact that every cell phone has a couple of problems for you. One is it's broadcasting into your head, if you have it mm -hmm. up to your head. But secondarily, for that signal to get to you, what you're telling us is that signal has to come through the walls of your house and may have to come right through your body because of the guy in the next room that wants to make a phone call. Exactly. That's insidious. Well, you know, I had never, I didn't use a cell phone a lot because I sort of felt instinctively, this is something that I hold it up against my head, it's going to, you know, the nearest antenna, which may be two or three miles away. And uh, I thought, you know, that's a pretty powerful blast to be, do I really want that through my head? This is before I knew anything about leakage of the blood-brain barrier, damage to DNA, suppression of the immune system, and many um, symptoms. One of the things that um, I want to do, Lyle, is that people are able to connect the dots. Um, even here in this hotel at this conference, people said, oh, I wasn't sleeping very well last night, uh, new bed or whatever. But I went around here with a radio frequency detector. Believe me, the levels are extremely high. So after Dr. Sinatra's talk today, I'm sure much more people are aware that uh, it's not just that it's a different bed, the cordless phones, the wireless networks. I mean, this is a pretty hot radiation environment. So once people can connect the dots with some of these sources, we're a long way to be able to remedy these and uh, know how to reduce the exposures. You can't see, feel, or taste all of this. Mm -hmm. How would you suggest that people that are skeptics spend 15 or $20 to do something that will absolutely knock their socks off? Good question. Um, let me clarify. You're absolutely right. This is a pollution called electropollution. We can't see it, and we can't smell it, but some people really can feel it. Some people feel it quite quickly in their heart because these electromagnetic frequencies, these uh, microwaves in the um, radio frequencies, in the microwave range, affect the heart directly, the rate and rhythm. Um, some people uh, may become dizzy. They may have ringing in the ears, uh, headaches, many things. But you're right. Generally, this is the sort of invisible, no, invisible threat, but this is an invisible challenge, let's say. In terms of meters, it's a little bit complicated. People, and as I set out in the book, uh, not attempting to make anyone a technical expert, but we need to understand the basic two different kinds of exposures or electromagnetic frequencies that 
from wired devices and also from wireless. So from wired devices you need a small gauss meter and for the wireless devices you need a radio frequency meter. Oh you do? Yes. Well I learned something. <laughs> so the gauss meter that's making all the noise isn't the only thing that we need to have. No. The gauss meter is great for all plugged-in appliances and for the wiring in your walls, um, you know, electric stove, um, uh, electric hybrid cars, unfortunately those batteries uh, need to be shielded. And, uh, but for all the radio frequency, so that's wireless, cordless phones, wireless routers, compact fluorescent lights, um, cell tower antennas, these you need a radio frequency meter. And not only that, you need to make sure it's in the right range because, for example, the cordless phones, when I got involved in this, the cordless phones was the biggest surprise for me. I mean, I kind of got it about cell phones, but like cordless phones? We've had these forever. However, what we didn't have forever was the digital. So one of the technical experts who've contributed to the book, and I'm not one of them, um, have explained is it's the jagged, pulsed, uh, raw, digital wave that is uh, disharmonious, aggressive, bombarding. Now I'm way too old to know what's cool in music now, but it's kind of like the heavy metal. It's very jarring, these frequencies. And the cordless phone emits very high levels. So you need a meter that can go up to that range, or else you might get a false low reading.